This section will cover the self-assembly process. For this process, we'll extend the crawlers, erect the gantry, and install the counterweight. But before starting, first confirm the following items. First, we will place the LMI into setup mode by pushing the setup button on the LMI and hold it for three seconds. This is the button with a picture showing the boom apart. This will allow the control functions to operate while the boom angle is below 15 degrees. It is important that the ground is level and firm. Place the machine in an area with enough room to assemble the machine and allow haul trucks to pass. First, we will extend the crawler frames. It is important to note that the crawler frames should only be extended or retracted with all counterweight removed. First, install the four axle extensions. They will provide the support for the track frames after they have been placed into the working position. Remove the locking pins from the four crawler frame slide arm and place them into the adjacent locking location. The hydraulic cylinder mounted in the main frame will extend the track frames. Please note that the machine will take the path of least resistance and may move far right or left depending on ground conditions. Push the hydraulic control lever located on the left side near the operator's seat to extend position. The locking pins will fall into place after the track frames are completely extended. It may be necessary to travel a short distance forward or backward slowly while extending the crawler frames. And make sure to install hairpin keepers in all four locking pins to hold them in place. Then install the shims in between the crawler frame and axle to take up the extra clearance. It may be necessary to swing the machine and shift the weight to install all shims. We will now raise the gantry from the transport position up to the working position. Lower the boom base section down onto the blocking. Disconnect the transportation links and the counterweight removal cylinders from the main frame and place the cylinder transport mounting brackets in the toolbox. Move the gantry cylinder control switch inside the cab to the up position. As the gantry is rising, take up excess boom cable slack as needed to keep the cable tight on the drum. After the gantry is fully raised, install tension member locking pins. For this demonstration, we will use the optional self-assembly sheave. This sheave assembly may also be used to remove track frames should it become necessary to reduce the transportation weight. Otherwise, the boom point section can be used for this self-assembly process. Use the lugs on the boom base section to position the self-assembly head as needed for installation. Now track the machine to the self-assembly head and attach it to the boom base section. When installing, use the double taper type pins for the lower pin locations. The double taper pins are needed for a safer removal of the head. We are now ready to install the single sheave block onto the self-assembly head. Reeve the block using the cable off of the front hoist drum. Run the cable through the two center sheaves and then through the block. Then install the anti-two block limit switch weight. Now feed the cable up through the sheave on the right. We are now ready to secure the wedge socket and pin it to the mounting location. When using the boom point section for self-assembly, install the point to the base section. Then install the guy lines for the boom point only. Refer to the guy line arrangement chart in the operators and maintenance manual and reeve the load block with a four or six part line. For this demonstration, we will use the optional self-assembly sheave. We will now connect the anti-2 block system. Install the anti-2 block limit switch to the mounting location on the head and attach the cable from the weight to the limit switch. Run the anti-2 block cable from the cable reel to the head and secure it to the mounting bracket. Connect the wires for the anti-2 block system at the limit switch and complete the circuit by making the final connection at the reel. Now pull the limit switch by hand and make sure the ATB or hook over hoist trouble code on the LMI warning bar is discontinued. Now boom up to clear the block from the ground. At this point use the crane to lay out all additional boom inserts that the job requires. For this demo we will add a 20-foot boom insert and an auxiliary sheave. First, we will lay out the 20-foot insert onto 4x4 blocks, then connect the point and auxiliary sheave to it. Make sure to install one boom roller on each 20 and 40-foot boom insert as needed. We are now ready to install the counterweights onto the machine. For easier installation, it is important that you place the crane on a firm and level ground. We will start by installing the two car body counterweights. 
Car body weights are two weights installed on the front and rear of the lower frame and each weigh 8,050 pounds. Lift the car body weights and install them to the mounting brackets on the main frame. After the car body weights have been installed, you will need to install the three rear main counterweights. Set all three counterweights upright, about five feet apart. Make sure the mounting brackets are all facing towards the machine. Back the machine up to within about five feet of the number one counterweight. Raise the boom angle to approximately 65 degrees and remove backstop spacers from the holders and place around the inner tubes of the backstops. Then raise the boom hoist as needed to align the fixing holes in the backstop tubes. The pin can be inserted when the boom angle is approximately 78 degrees. Insert the fixing pins to lock the inner and outer backstop tubes together. Install the red flag between the pins as a reminder that the backstops are locked. Raising the boom until the pinhole has passed or after the pin is inserted will cause damage to the boom or backstop. We now need to remove the gantry cylinder rods from the gantry. Operate the control switch inside the cab as needed to remove tension from the cylinders. Then fully retract the cylinder rods. Now lower the boom hoist control to remove the load on the gantry tension member pins. Remove the pins and place them in the holders. Now as the boom hoist is lowered, the gantry will lower and the boom will stay in a fixed position. Now turn the key switch to the off position. Connect the cord for the counterweight control box to the receptacle on the right side of the machine. These two switches will control the hydraulic cylinders used to lower the main counterweights onto the main frame brackets. Restart the engine and set the accelerator grip to approximately 1000 RPM. First, fully retract the right and left lift cylinders and set the gantry in the low position by lowering the boom hoist. Make sure the counterweight cylinders and travel kit linkage hang free from the gantry as it is being lowered. Connect the link from the counterweight cylinder to the number one counterweight. Slowly boom up to raise the gantry and counterweight. Lower the counterweight onto the main frame holding brackets by lowering the cylinders. The cylinders can be operated independently to help keep the weight level. Install the washers and slide in the first set of bolts, then secure them with double nuts at the main frame. Unpin the cylinder linkage and install the number two weight in the same manner. The extra link on the cylinder is not used when installing the number three weight. Unpin this link and set it aside. Now install the last counterweight and slide in the second set of bolts and secure them at the main frame. Once the counterweights are installed, we need to place the gantry back to the locked position. Raise the boom hoist to align the gantry tension's member pin holes. Install both tension member lock pins. Slowly raise the boom hoist as needed to remove the tension from the backstop locking pins. Remove the locking pins and the red caution flag. Please note that over-hoisting the boom when removing the backstop locking pin may damage the backstop or the boom base. Never leave these spacers on during normal crane operation. Operating the crane with the spacer installed will cause catastrophic damage to the boom. Lower the boom hoist to remove tension from the red backstop spacers. Remove the backstop spacers and place them on the holding brackets. Raise the gantry cylinders as needed and install the pins in the gantry cylinder rod locations. Turn the ignition key to the off position. Then remove the connector on the control box from the receptacle. To finish the counterweight assembly, connect the wiring connector of the swing flasher located on the counterweight side. We are now ready to remove the self-assembly sheave. Place the LMI back into the setup mode. Disconnect wire rope and spool up the wire rope to the boom base section. Then lower the self-assembly sheave to the ground. Next, make sure to disconnect the anti-two block cables and spool the cable up on the reel. Remove the two lower double taper pins first and then remove the two top pins. Back away from the sheave assembly and align the boom base with the last insert on the boom. Install the top connecting pins. Connect all guy lines. The guy line arrangement chart is located in the cab or in the operator's maintenance manual. Then raise the boom hoist to align the bottom holes. Install the double tapered pins. Lower the boom to remove tension on the upper spreader. Once this is complete, remove the connecting pins from the spreader to the base. Then raise the spreader to clear the brackets. 
Once again, lower the guides and install the pins on the spreader and secure them with the locking pins. Using the front drum for the main block, reeve the block with whatever parts of line are required for the job. For this demo, we will use four-part line on the main load block. For the load ball, use the rear drum which will use one part of line on the auxiliary sheave. First, connect the anti-two block weights and limit switches to the tip of the auxiliary sheave. The donut style weight is for the ball, and the other weight is for the block. Once again, connect the anti-two block cable to the limit switches and complete the connection at the reel. Before operating, confirm that all guy cable cotter pins are properly bent, and all boom pins are installed and keeper pins are in place. And make sure the boom is free of any pins, tools, or loose articles. Now pull the limit switches for the ATB system on the main hook and on the load ball and confirm that the fault codes on the LMI warning bar are eliminated. The out of angle should be the only code remaining. We are now ready to boom the machine up into the working position. After the machine has reached the working radius, all fault codes on the LMI should be eliminated. Double check to make sure that the anti-2 block is working on the main hook and also on the load ball. Also check that the high boom angle kickouts are working properly. In this configuration, the high boom angle should kick out at 82 degrees. Now the machine is ready for operation.